So, today I want to talk about breakups and breaking up with a loved one and how to deal with that. I still am, and this is the reason why I'm also going through it, it is actually very selfish. Um, even though I broke up quite half a year ago, you know, cl- well, actually more than that, way more than that, 10 months or something, I guess, I'm not sure, but... It is some time and I do want to go through some things because I very recently uh, made my life a lot harder and I want to prevent other people from doing so as well and I've been very fortunate to talk to some some people and I, I also want to talk about talking to people kind of a meta thing um, since I uh, believe it could also be quite important to, to point it out, but I, as interesting as it is, I found uh, a Reddit, well, article or a post or whatever you want to call it, and it, it really kind of shows uh, quite a similar place as, as I was in or am in uh, with, with same or similar, um, similar variables, you know, let's put it like that. So yeah, going through breakup. Just got out of a long distance relationship with my first real serious girlfriend three years. As it's been the same for me. This past year we had well, I do want to point out something. The chance that that some people that you know maybe uh, well I'm gonna be quite open here with with how I feel and uh, I have also been in the past. Uh, the well I know that there's the possibility that some people are gonna see that. Maybe this person is also going to see that, which uh, maybe, well, maybe I'm also going to see that in the future, you know, because I'm, I'm definitely going to remember that. I'm definitely going to remember talking about the same fucking shit for so, so long and so often, and, you know, coming back to it from time to time and whatnot. But um, but that is the chance. And, and I'm putting myself into a pretty vulnerable spot. And I do want to point it out. I see it as something neither good or bad or nor bad um well yeah anyway this past year we had some communication issues mostly on her side but i could have done better she stuffed too many things inside and it caused a lot of bad fights we were still doing better and i thought we had a future planned out we got into a couple more bad fights when i came back home for a month or so and it got out of hand and i got dumped Tried to bargain and apologize in reason, but no luck. She wasn't really being all that kind or respectful to me during this two-week period of, of being in limbo. Well, I kind of know that as well. Anyway, eventually it did some crappy stuff to me and said some mean stuff. And I gave him the anger and betrayal and said some really bad, stu- some really bad stuff that I'm afraid I can never repair. Which is a problem, by the way. Now I'm blocked on everything. It hurts so bad. It's been nearing two months since that last nasty and emotional phone call. The more time ticks on, the more I hope I can get a chance to redeem myself, to apologize and show her how much I care and how I can change. Realistically, it's probably hopeless. I know she still loves me and feels strongly and I keep finding it hard knowing that what was supposed to be a beautiful thing died so suddenly and... As I feel prematurely, I wish there was anything left I can do, anything at all, but sadly I can't do much else but let go. I spent this whole year planning this summer and I felt I was putting in a lot of effort and now that things ended it just feels so empty. Three years and it all is to waste, which is definitely not the case by the way, because there's still things that one learned through that period and this is also one of the reasons why I think being in a relationship as bad as it can end and as difficult as it can start is incredible for your personal growth because you're going to see things, you're going to notice things, you're going to have to deal with things that you wouldn't be, you know, that you wouldn't have to deal with if you weren't in a relationship. Um, all, the play, all, all the plane tickets, promises, sacrifices we made for each, uh, for each other. I'm mostly filled with guilt, regret, emptiness and small hope that she will unblock me and maybe we can reconcile. I'm stuck in bed and I find it hard to do much. I'm the worst shape I've ever been, which 
by the way is the case for well i would say quite a lot of people that go through breakups that it is indeed one of the most difficult things one has to go through and later on we're also gonna talk about coping mechanisms you know there's <laughs> there's different ways to cope with things you know alcohol and some other stuff and let's see what, what what people are saying which is i think the well not not the most important part here but i'm interested what you got to do is let go of needing her after you do that make sure there's been a healthy time away and reach out to her to give a sincere apology and that all you want to do is heal the the rupture but that doesn't mean you two have to get back together she will consider your sorries to be a ruse get her back into broken relationship if you aren't genuine be open and with a clean slate your future isn't sealed but you should be flexible to accept whatever future is in store you are angry and then pissed that it didn't work out the way you planned because you're attached to your ex really release all expectation and work on being strong and doing the right thing not the thing you feel you need from your fear and ego and if you can't repair it if she refuses your genuine offer go about your business and move on yourself wishing her the best and if you can't repair it i want to repeat that if she refuses your genuine offer go about your business and move on yourself wishing her the best and it is something that i've realized yesterday while actually being quite angry quite angry um uh, quite, quite angry about you know fucking things up once again quite you know w- really quite literally and i thought well why do i feel this hate why do i why do i need to focus on that hate why do i do i have to have that hate in mind wouldn't it just be better to to lead my life with love wishing everyone the best and i think it makes sense and it is also letting me feel very good about myself and and very good in general like okay i've been hurt and i've i've really been hurt but i i deeply still know and this is what i believe in and this is also what i want this person i want this person to be happy and healthy and feel good i still care i can't do much about that uh even though it's 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 getting less but i just hope that people are doing well i want them to to be happy and healthy and maybe also um you know for future relationships even though it is something pretty difficult to think about and and have in mind like okay it's your ex and you know they are in a relationship and you know what they're doing and and stuff like that it's it it kind of also shows one how attached one still is but i just want it to be good i just want it to be fine no matter how bad someone might be to me no matter how how worse I feel after meeting this person no matter how you know no matter how this person is dealing with me you know I just wish this person to be happy and healthy and and do good in life it makes way more sense it makes way more sense than seeking revenge and you know hoping this other person is feeling bad and so also having that pain that I'm having you know doesn't make any sense i don't wish it to everybody or anybody yeah i might be fucked i might be in a bad place but to be honest i'm actually relatively well off i am relatively well off and that's due to you know first of all people around me but second of all also i think to myself but but anyway i do not think that that going for hate and going for revenge and going for anything that's somehow negative is the right thing to do and it's also not really feeling right anyway three years wasted question mark i do not know about that what have you learned long distance relationships are hard it takes very good communication you bring out some hateful comments from a woman you can say some hateful things when pushed so you got a lot to think about give her some time but more importantly give yourself some solitude 
solitude time to consider how you contributed to this. Because of course, it's it's always like you did something and the other person did something and never ever fucking neglect the other person. You both did something. You both contributed to the situation. It's not only you, you know, it's, it's well, you know, so, sometimes of course it is 80, 20, 70, 30, 40, 60, you know, it's not necessarily always 50, 50, you know, of course, but, you know, bringing, b- being too harsh to oneself and, you know, thinking about like, wow, you know, it's all been my fault. No, probably not. You've probably also been doing some good things. I mean, three years is three years, you know, but, but yeah, on, on the other hand, if the other person feels like, okay, you know, you only did bad things to me and it's only been a bad time, just the overall relationship's been just bad, you can't change that. You can't change how somebody else is feeling and thinking and doing quite in the end. If this person feels like their relationship was bad overall, then it is what it is. Even though it might not be your thoughts, even though it might not be what you think, and even though it might not be reality. You know, we human beings like to not imagine things, but, we, you know, we, we tend to really filter. And sometimes we filter things so that they kind of seem bad, and sometimes we filter things that they seem good. This makes sense. Uh, when you have done that, when you've done that, write her a letter thanking her for everything she has contributed to your learning about yourself. And trust us, women's time in relationships is much more valuable than a man's time. You wasted three years of her prime fertility years. <laughs> her girlfriend's been telling her to dump you for two years and three months. Trust me. Which, uh, well, t- to really be honest, it is quite the case, and it might be well. You know, thinking about and, and keeping in mind, like, you know, there's such thing that is called, um, what is called social market value? Is it what it is? And and also your prime time and our prime fertility years. And apparently it's the case that, that women are having that peak at 24, while men are having it in their 30s or somewhat, which... Um, might be the case, I don't know, like, this is not something that I'm an expert in, but I think it is very interesting, you know, thinking about that, but I, I also tend to to be very conscious about, you know, what I'm reading, what I'm saying, and, and how I see this information, because I, well, maybe I tend to just be quite, uh, quite a quote-unquote feminist, you know, even though, like, it really depends on what this definition means to you, or what definition you're having for this word, but, you know, I don't like to to talk women down, if this makes sense, and then just put them into a light that I just don't want them to be in, you know, as maybe something not equal to, to a man, if this makes sense, you know, which doesn't necessarily have to be something negative. Of course, you could have um, inequality, meaning that a woman is better than a man. You know, and not the opposite way, but I think that most often, if we think about inequality, then it is quite the contrary. But anyway, uh, Lola did that last paragraph. In my experience, he shouldn't write her anything. When it's over, it's over. Trying to write a letter will give him a sense of hope, and one last interaction, perhaps she will realize how great he is. It would be like showing to her his emotions again, like being a couple again, and they are not, not even friends by the looks of it. He will eventually be back on his feet, both on his own and with some help. Internet strangers, friends and family, and by focusing on the greatness of his life. Which, by the way, is something tremendous to think about. The greatness that you are having in yourself, that you could do, what you can change in your life, what you can make in your life, and it shouldn't be disrupted by somebody dumping you and by some relationship that ended. You know, whether it is because of you or because of that other person. Why the fuck does something that happened in the past have to influence your present or the future? It sunk cost. It already happened. Fuck, man. I never said he shouldn't write the letter to win her back. If he truthfully reflects what he contributed to this failure, then all that is left is gratitude for the learning opportunity they both 
went through to get up. But yes, OP, be clear it is over. All that's left is to learn from this situation so you won't repeat it again, which most likely is going to happen anyway. But how well you learn from it is how successful you will be in the future. It takes time. I'm a couple months into my long-term breakup and it still sucks sometimes. But I can't dwell on it. That's not how to heal and grow and move on. Recommend not drinking so you don't do anything stupid. And it is actually a great point here. Uh, leading to John Peterson, how to get over a breakup fast. There is a video, but this is kind of the... Um, the, uh, the, the text version of that and I'm really willing to go through that. There is more, more to a breakup than one may think. Jordan Peterson, a Canadian clinical psychologist and professor of psychology at the University of Toronto, talks about how to get over a breakup in this video below. Jordan Peterson starts by talking about clients getting PTSD from a relationship ending suddenly, suddenly. The client will try to wrap their head about what they did wrong in the relationship. People do this for the hopes that the probability of the same problems happening again will be minimized. If you fail into a big fall into a big pit and you get really hurt, the first thing you should figure out is how to not fall into, into big pits anymore. And your mind is set up exactly for that. John said in reference to your mind racing after a breakup. On the other hand, you might want to check Jim Carrey's different take on depression. Well, John's advice to helping someone get through a breakup is walking them through it. He suggests doing a situational analysis, meaning to break down what happened and to make goals for moving forward. So here are the steps to do situational analysis. The first thing is identify the goal that you want to achieve. In a case involving a breakup, the goal could be something like getting over that person without turning to alcohol or drugs as a coping mechanism. Another example could be something more specific, such as I will not fight with my future partner about cleaning the house. I will make a cleaning chart and we will work together with cleaning the house. Finding that goal is the start of the situational analysis. Second point is identify the personal strengths that will help you to achieve the goal. An example of strength in getting over a relationship could be having support from friends and family with the breakup. A weakness could be being obsessed with looking at their Instagram account, which can trigger feelings of wanting to go back to that person. Looking at what can help you and what could also hurt you in the process of achieving your goal is the second part of the analysis. You might want to read our article about why are men so lonely with Dr. Rankin Chatterjee or something, which I, I might actually check out, but let's see. The third point is review and prioritize your goals. Finally, make a rough estimate of when these goals could be achieved. An example of this would be, I will not be crying over this person in one year from this date. Or I will not drink for six months after this breakup to feel the true feelings of the situation and so I can do self-reflections whenever possible. Putting the goals in place and setting them with a time frame is the next part of the situational analysis. The fourth is, Work on achieving those goals. The final step is to eventually achieve the goals. You might have some hiccups before getting there, but that is okay. In summary, John Peterson explains that most people believe that when a breakup happens, they believe they did something to deserve it. A lot of the time, it isn't what a person did to make the breakup happen. The couple might just not be compatible. Setting goals to get over the person will help the situation. If you are someone is going through a breakup, our man's group can help. Um, something that I'm keeping in mind, something that's bothering me quite a lot is that this is always going to be part of, you know, this thing, this situation, also what I put myself in in very recently is always going to be part of, of my history and this person's history. And I don't want to be, I, I don't want to have that. You know, to some degree, I would really like to just erase all uh, you know, all the quote-unquote knowledge, all the experiences that I had with this person, whether good or bad, I just want to erase it, I just want to forget. Which, you know, I know is just not the best thing. And of course, because I've learned a lot about myself and about other people and just whatnot. But I... Uh, well, it's... It's, it's difficult to, 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 to have that mark 
and be okay with that mark. That mark on my time span of life that says that, that I did something wrong and that, um, you know, a lot happened, you know, good and bad and, and whatnot, but I don't know, like, I, I just don't want it to, well, I don't know. There's one last piece of text, which is quite long, but I still going to go through it since it's, it's, it's of importance for me. Getting over a breakup medication from Ibn Hazm to antidepressants. In his work, Tak al-Khaman, the Daaf scholar, the Andalusian writer Ibn Hazm tells the tale of a man he describes as wise, reasonable and sensible. Until the day he traveled to Baghdad and stayed in on stayed in one of its inns. There he saw the innkeeper's daughter, fell in love with her and married her. When they were alone together, she saw him undressed and, being a virgin, was alarmed by the size of his penis. She fled to her mother and would not see him. Those around her advised her to go to him, but she refused and came close to death, and so he left her. Regretting his decision, he attempted to win her back, but could not, even with the help of al abhari and alas, for none could find any solution to his predicament. His mind became distorted and he went to stay in the Maristan or infirmary where he suffered for a long time until he had almost recuperated and found consolation and yet still whenever he recalled her he would sigh deeply. A few years ago my mind also became distorted like that of the wise man but since these days... Uh, we don't go straight to hospitals for that sort of thing. I decided for the first time in my life to visit a psychiatrist. I complained to him for a whole hour. I frequently burst into floods of tears. I slept for hours and couldn't get out of bed. I was suffering liver problems that the doctor seemed unable to find a reason for. My hair and beard were thinning. I had really signed, uh, resigned from my job several months previously. I saw no reason to live and was overwhelmed by despair. I consumed a vast quantity and variety of drugs, which brought me neither pleasure or relief. He listened, then pronounced that my complaints were the side effects of my recent breakup. The psychosomatic symptoms, too, were simply the pains that accompanied the end of an intimate relationship. In other contexts, I'd have been angry, refusing to see my emotional experience, my epic of shattered love, compared with or ranked along to the love affairs of others. We all believe that our romantic journeys are unique, but I was drained and in pain and willing to accept any diagnosis of what was happening to me. I was ready to try whatever the doctor prescribed without hesitation or objection. Uh, the doctor gave me a strip of antidepressants. They relieved the pain and brought some equilibrium to my disturbed body, but it took time to find consolation, as Ibn Hazm called the convalescence of the wise man in the history or story. Although I fell in love with the wise man, my beloved left me, not because of the size of my penis, but because of its fondness for adventure, along with other reasons too numerous to mention. When I was in the darkest depths of pain after our separation, friends pressured me to get over it as fast as possible, so I decided to get away and left the city to escape their nagging. On my journey, while I wallowed in my pain and sabotaged any potential chances for future relationships, I discovered a whole break of industry, an economy of strategies for getting over love. Ibn Hazm devotes a chapter entitled Aldana, a word which describes sort of grueling and all-consuming grief to the pain of love lost and the trials of breakups. It is followed by a chapter entitled al Suluf, which is consolation, in which he writes... Consolation after a long separation is like the disappointment which enters the soul when it achieves what is what has long sought. The intensity of its striving abates and its desire fades away. Then, through the story of his experience with a courtesan with whom he fell in love as an adolescent and who accompanied his family on their peregrinations to and from Cordoba before finally leaving him. Ibn Hazm arrives at the first cure for the trials of love and separation, the consolation of the chapter's title. The healing process which he devised into the stages of forgetting, indifference and replacement. 
But even Hassan seems to contradict himself after repeating that any love from which one can be consoled and any relationship that can be forgotten is not to be counted on. For Ibn Hazm, it is not true love. Notice that unlike in today's psychoanalytic, psychoanalytical and romantic writings, in Ibn Hazm's time, passion and love represented a link to metaphysical world. Every soul was split in two, and each half sent to his life to search for the half which would complete it. It was the meeting of a half with its lost counterpart, which represented true love as opposed to the kind of passion which cannot be counted on. Ibn Hazm wrote his Dolph's Collar to help lovers distinguish love from ephemeral lust to guide them past critics and naysayers along its thorny path. Well, this, of course, sounds very different from today's discourse, in which the ideal of virtuous love has been replaced by notions of healthy and toxic relationships, balance between the two parties, the importance of equally, equality, respect, and non exploitation, I'm sorry, and other concepts which have filtered through from the realm of political correctness to replace terms for such love as Garam and Hava. The wise man in Ibn Sassam's story ended up in the Morriston because he was suffering and in pain. At the time, the function of the Morrison and infirmary for the mentally ill was to relieve pain and suffering rather than to subdue the patient and ready them uh, for a return to the treadmill of production. There, even has a wise man did not forget his beloved, but sighed whenever her name was mentioned. He learned with time to silence his longing to control his reactions and to maintain his equanimity. Forgetting most the beloved was only for false and contempt the beloved. Today's breakup advice tends to place forgetting at the center of its recovery, pa- recovery plan. On self-help websites, the foremost piece of advice to heartbroken lovers is usually to forget. Stay away from your ex, keep communication to a minimum, get rid of anything that reminds you of them. After that, the advice gets confusing. Don't sit in your room mopping, go out and meet new people. Life is full of pleasures and adventures, but don't rush into new relationships because you might get hurt. Put your sadness aside and get out of yourself. Cry and express your emotions, they say. But if your sadness lasts too long, they accuse you of weakness, of giving it in to pain, of wallowing, or worse of all, of a pathetic attempt to win back the, attempt, the attention of the person who used to care about you. It's no wonder the advice is contradictory. There is no clear route map for avoiding or overcoming pain or for the confusing task of getting over both the pain of a breakup and the memory of love. Our friend of mine, one friend of mine who went through a painful divorce decided to go to a psychoanalyst rather than a psychiatrist. Instead of being being prescribed medication like me, my friend has spent hours with her therapist and is still doing so, a year and a half down the line. Looking like she's got it together and is proud of it, she spends more time, more than 10 hours a day at work, sometimes works six days instead of five cares for her dog and steers clear of any potential relationships on the grounds that she isn't ready yet, according to her therapist. She wants to maintain the stability she has now because, in her words, I need a bit of time to work on myself. Analyzing her last relationship, my friend found that she had always been attracted to men who would lie to her and exploit her emotionally. My response to that was to ask, are the men who don't? She shook her head, you don't understand, the problem isn't them, it's me, for being attracted to men like that. She pays around 25 bucks for each session with her psychoanalyst, but she no longer has suicidal thoughts now, or borrows our phones to stalk her ex on Facebook, and she convinced that she's forgotten her last relationship, she just needs to focus on her own issues. Unlike her, I have never tried to forget, I remember the mistakes and happy moments of every passing fling. What would be left if we forgot our emotional connections, the most profound and affecting of the experiences which makes us who we are? And anyway, you never really forget, you just put the relationship and all of its associations in the black box and since there is nowhere to put the box, you end up carrying it on your back forever, thinking no one's noticed. Every time you try to open a door to let love in, the black box eyes you from the corner of the room, shattering your focus and distracting you from the person beside you. 
who is waiting eagerly for the moments of the climax, which will offer proof that the two of you have truly connected. Every quote-unquote getting over it rests on an illusion of forgetting and uh, on a flight into the future. Yet, no matter how hard you strain to break away, the memory will clinch to you or lurk in the corner of the room along with the broken pieces of your heart and soul. Maybe the solution is not to forget, but to leave the wounds open, to wear them with pride and share them with others. Whether you want to entice them to bed or just to the cinema, don't hide your experiences from your new partner, because no matter how hard you try to forget, the monster will still be there in the box waiting for the right moment. Perhaps your new partner can help you tame the monster instead, help you transform your anger at yourself and your ex into the energy you need in order to change and build a new life and a new relationship. One day the monster could be your pet.